Greetings, parents, guardians, and caregivers. Uh, I'm Mr. David Leffler. I'm the teacher for career and financial awareness uh, for your son or daughter in this fall semester at Ocalco High School. My email address is right here. I typically have that open every morning from about 6.30 until about 3 p.m. during the week. I don't really get to my emails much during Saturday, maybe on Sunday night. Uh, the reason being, I have three children and they enjoy monopolizing my time. So that means after 3 o'clock and until I wake up in the morning around 5.30, I probably will not be on my school email. Any other time, I can usually quickly get back to your responses, especially during the school day. Weekends, I'll probably get back to you early Monday morning. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions, message me with any concerns. Uh, we're getting to the point in the semester where I will send emails out for two reasons. I like sending a lot more positive emails out there, just saying to the parents, thank you, your son or daughter's been doing great in my class. Just wanted to give you a heads up and give you a virtual fist bump, or sorry, elbow bump in 2020. Or uh, if a student is struggling uh, with their work or a variety of other reasons. In this class, we have eight major units. The first one is the career unit. And this unit focuses on just doing a lot of exploration, uh, giving some kids some surveys where they can kind of narrow down what they might think they might want to pursue. Because a lot of times in their minds as 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds, they have this grand idea of what they want to do. But then they research a little bit and they find out, oh, I'm getting paid that amount. Or, oh, I have to wear a formal suit and tie. Or, oh, I have to travel a lot. And there are some drawbacks and they might change their mind. And the focus of that is data collection, figuring out their personalities, their skills, goals, and try to line them up a little bit, a little bit with some future careers. I, I know when I was a ninth grader, if you'd have told me I was going to be a teacher, I probably would have laughed at you. But here I am 23 years later, and it's been my best career decision by far ever. Then we get into paychecks and taxes. Uh, we talk mostly about hourly earnings. Uh, we talk about the advantages of being an hourly worker versus a salaried worker uh, and vice versa. Commission, salespeople, and things like that. Uh, and taxes, we don't get really in-depth into filling out many tax forms. We talk about all the taxes that are collected in this country and how our government spends them. Uh, and we fill out a basic 1040 form. And I always stress to the kids, if you have a, a summer job where maybe you only worked 15 hours a week, you are entitled to all of your federal taxes back. Uh, and it might be only 50 bucks, 100 bucks, or 150 bucks, but I remember when I was a 15 year old and I remember my first tax return, I think I got 120 bucks back and it felt like, like a million dollars. And I do stress to the kids that if Uncle Sam owes you money, he's probably not gonna come looking for you. But if you owe Uncle Sam money, I guarantee at some point in the future, they're gonna contact you. So uh, Make sure you file those taxes and get all your federal taxes returned when you are a teenager, and even into your young 20s, maybe. Savings accounts and checking accounts. We owe, since the focus of this class is career and finances, I stress so much about the point of you know, keeping track of your money, making sure you're putting a little bit away. And it's really not never too young to start saving. And you've all heard that. Uh, and with the checking account, I know this generation will be writing a lot fewer checks than you or I did, but you still have to maintain a bank account. And with digital technology these days and so many people with bad intentions, there's a great chance that they will probably, their identity will get hacked at some point. You all have probably had at some point some type of fraud committed against you financially. And I just stress, look, keep track. There's no reason whatsoever when it comes to using your checking account, that you should either virtually bounce a check or physically bounce a check. There's just no reason whatsoever. If you're not tracking your money, it just means you're not, I don't wanna say you're being lazy, but you're not just being very careful. And I stress that throughout the entire course. Budgeting, when we get into this, I, I find it quite amusing sometimes when I'll say, all right, in five minutes, let's pretend you're all out on your own, let's, you're in your early 20s, you're living in an apartment. In the next five minutes, just list the number of items you feel that you're going to be solely financially responsible for. And the lists 
that I get them, most lists are less than 10 items. And I don't laugh because they don't know any better. But when we get through our list and we go through the, 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 as a class, we usually come up easily with 20, 25 items. And I, I think the, the most eye-opening experience is when you go out grocery shopping for this first time, how much stuff actually costs. And it's usually a fun activity we do. And then we figure out what their net pay has to be after we add up all their expenses. Then we get into credit. And again, with this generation using almost, I don't want to say 100% finances on, online, but again, credit falls into one of those categories where it is, in my opinion, it's way too easy for people to use your credit card. It's way too easy for you to physically go into a store, not show any ID, swipe a piece of plastic, and then walk out of that store with merchandise and nobody knowing it's not really you. Uh, and I, I, again, I harp on being very, very paranoid in a good way about your money and how it's being spent and managing it. Because if you're not checking your online records at least once a week, there's a good chance somebody's trying to hack into your account. It ha it's happened to me a couple of times. It's happened to my wife a couple of times. But we've caught it each time because we're very on top of our finances. As far as housing is concerned, we most, mostly focus on apartments because that's typically going to be the first move out of home. And, and some of the, the benefits of you know, leasing an apartment versus paying on a mortgage or the responsibilities that go into, even when you move out of your dorm room, if you're in college and moving into your apartment, that your electricity just doesn't magically appear. That if you don't pay your bills, your electricity and lights will magically disappear. And the responsibilities go, that go along with you know, just general housekeeping, maintenance, and things like that. And lastly, we get into some minor investing topics stocks and bonds and some mutual funds and things like that and we get them into these virtual online simulations where some kids really they really get into it and they're opening up the websites that we recommended as soon as they step into class to see if their their monopoly money that they invested in their stocks is doing well or poorly as far as how grades are calculated in here each of those units that i just showed there's a test and it's all done on schoology i would say that they account for about 60, 65% of the, the course grade. Computer projects, they account for the majority of the rest of it, so about 35%, maybe 40%. Uh, and typically there's a PowerPoint involved or an iMovie or some type of you know, creative Word document project. I don't give a lot of homework, but it does account for a small percent of the grade. Typically it's me giving them a current article about a topic we're covering in class and then answering some questions. An extra credit, I'll do about two or three of these before each of the unit tests. And in a class size of about 20, I reward the top three or four kids with a couple extra credit points. N not a ton, but maybe just a little bit of a motivation for them to study before the actual Kahoot review. And due dates, I stress this with all my classes, and I think sometimes I'm too flexible with this, but let's say, for example, a project is due today, and they don't turn it in. I give them about one or two days buffer before I put a zero in there. And then I also stress to them, it only becomes a permanent zero when the marking period is over. So they have a, a decent amount of time to get me something, to change that zero into a number. That's where the partial credit comes in. It only becomes a permanent zero once the semester is over. My daily game plan, I'll put it two areas on school, Gene. I'll go there right now. First, I will post an update over here. I'll do this about an hour or so before each class, sometimes 30 minutes. And then I'll go over our daily lesson plan right here. Today, the check-in was they had to do a Kahoot review and work on a PowerPoint project that is due in a couple of days. I will also send this exact same thing. I like it better here because it allows you to format it. The other way I send it, which I think most students will check it is under course options I select send message then I put the message here with the date and it says the exact same thing down here so I know it has reached them at least two times the videos I mentioned sometimes I will show the class or demonstrate something in class that involves some type of technology for example recording your voice in PowerPoint some students don't know how to do that so I'll put a real brief video out there explaining how to do that. So if they're not sure, they can go back to the videos. 
Uh, PowerPoints, like I said, I'll, I'll go through a PowerPoint in class. The slides that the kids online weren't here for, I'll put those slides out on PowerPoint, and then they can follow along and fill out the terms, the vocabulary, any examples I include in the PowerPoint in their unit outline. Kahoot, Kahoot reviews, I mentioned that before. We'll do a couple of those a week just to keep the, the students sharp and reviewed for their upcoming tests. Project work time. I like to give the kids at least 30 to 40 minutes of the 80 minute block or actually 90 minute block today for just then work on their projects. Uh, and it also gives them the opportunity to ask many questions if some directions are not clear. And I will always, always, always provide uh, former students great examples so they can, they can see what a really put together, creative, thorough, excellent project looks like. Uh, if I don't have it online, I make sure I show them examples while they're actually in school with me. Google Meets, we're going to start doing this in October. Uh, so far, uh, it has worked well with me putting videos out there. The questions and answers through Schoology messages have been smooth, uh, but we are going to add an additional avenue for them to contact with me. So it, my initial thinking is I'll open up a window of Google Meet time during each class. I'll keep it open. They can check in whenever if they have questions for me. Or I might require them to check in so we can, as an entire class, including the kids at school, uh, talk about certain topics uh, for the unit. And that's it. Don't hesitate to ask or email me with any questions. Uh, and I look forward to working with your sons and daughters for the rest of this marking period. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon.